What's up, Leafs Nation? Welcome back to another game preview. I'm Zach Phillips, and today we're going to be breaking down game number 14 of the Toronto Maple Leafs regular season as they return home to take on the Boston Bruins after what was a disappointing road trip that resulted in absolute chaos from Leafs fans we're going from Saturday night to Sunday night, complaining about this team. The highs, the lows. Did they play well? Did they not? Do they need to be getting wins? Are we happy with points? It has been an absolute gong show leading to this team. At this point in time, being 6-5-2, and two, going up against the 6-6-1 six, six, and one Boston Bruins. Who would have thought at this point in the season, both teams in a weird no man's land. The Bruins, their head coach is on the hot seat. David Pasternak is being called out. Leafs fans in Toronto are putting their brand new head coach and Craig Berube on the hot seat at this point. It has been a wild roller coaster of a season to start here through the first 14 and or 13 I guess as we head into game number 14 for this Leafs team and then let's just add to the controversy Austin Matthews here after a couple of games where it felt like his offense was just a little bit off I kept saying over and over again it feels like he's a little bit lacking calibration he needs that extra little bit to be able to get things back on track he's that half second or half inch off every single time holding him back from being this offensive threat like we've seen him be every single season and you're saying when will it come when will it come is something wrong with him all of a sudden is a conversation on the morning show amongst Nick and Rosie and it's a fair conversation to have well Austin Matthews will not play tonight against the Boston Bruins because he is out day-to-day with an upper body injury. Craig Berube did say it had nothing to do with the wrist. We are not sure as at, at this point if he took a hit, if he got hit with a puck, or a, something happened uh, in, in a practice, in a morning skate. No, or, nobody knows right now what could have happened with Austin Matthews, uh, but upper body will not have him playing in tonight's game. Now, for those of you absolutely panicking, Matthews is out, we're going to get smoked. Matthews is out, there's no shot this team wins. How about some interesting stats that were probably brought up on the morning show anyways. 35-19-2 is the Maple Leafs record all-time without Austin Matthews in the lineup. 35-19-2, and and if you wanted uh, any more of a reminder, yeah, Game five and six of the playoffs, Austin Matthews did not play. They won. Forced it to game seven. They won. So, who knows? No reason to panic really with Matthews being out. Clearly, I guess would be the first thing. But outside of that, doesn't seem to uh, really have any kind of drastic effect one way or another about the outcome of the game uh, as well. Going into this one, another interesting thing to consider or think about. The last Leafs regular season win against Boston, November 6, 2022. Almost two years to the date. It is currently November 5th. Almost two years to the date since the Toronto Maple Leafs have beat the Boston Bruins in a regular season game. Some things just feel like they are unsolvable. This is one of them. The Boston Bruins. Can't beat them in playoff rounds. Can't beat them in regular season. They've got our number. It's time for things to change. Maybe those things will change with tonight's lineup for game 14 of the season. Their second meeting between these two. Let's check it out with what we've got for Austin Matthews being out. We are going to get Max Domi up there as the number one center for tonight between Matthew Nyes and Mitch Marner. I mean, you're having questions about depth. Who can step up? How many centers do you have that can actually play center? Who should be going? Who should be in these spots? There you go. Let's give it a shot. I mean, I am kind of surprised, kind of jokingly, kind of not, that they don't give Nylander a shot at center. You're missing a big boy. Why not let the guy that you were going to try in camp play center? But apparently not. He's not going to go at center here tonight. Mitch Marner, another guy I've thought over the last little while, hey, maybe he could get a go at center. Still not going to go at center. He's going to play on the right wing. So that is how your first line shakes out. Second line, as we go over to them, Patrick, Tavares, Nylander. I guess part of why maybe you don't want to move Nylander to center is because you want to keep this line together. I think they've been really good. No changes there. 
Third line right now, Bobby McMahon, Pontus Holmberg, Nick Robertson. Lots of concern about this line. I will be very honest with you guys. Uh, The third line and fourth lines typically feel like we go into these games against the Bruins and it's like dagger goal from Pasternak in overtime. But outside of that, it's these random lower line just... Guys you wouldn't even think are threats all of a sudden just finding ways to dominate this Leafs team when it matters. You know, why why wouldn't a guy like John Beecher or Justin Brazo score a massive goal in a moment where you're like, oh my God, I didn't see that coming in. Obviously, some of those guys get opportunities to be elevated as their lines change, but historically, that's kind of what's happened. And Trent Fredericks of the world have scored these heartbreaking goals against this Maple Leafs team. When you look down to a third and fourth line of what we have right now, I'm not worried about this fourth line necessarily against Boston. I feel like if anybody's going to be able to handle physicality and pressure and maybe even turn it around on its head, it's this fourth line of Lorenz, Camp, and Reeves. But this third line, man, there is some concern there. Pontus Holmberg not played that great so far to start the season. Bobby McMahon looked okay uh, in his return after he sat sat out for game one of the season. He looked pretty good right away. Then it kind of just went to okay and not anything special. Um, I don't know if necessarily know how well it's going to do for him if he's playing again amongst these younger guys with Holmberg and Robertson. I don't know if that benefits his game at all. And then on the other side is Nick Robertson, a guy who has struggled so far to start this season. We thought he was a goal scorer, and to this point in time, he's only got one goal on the season offensively not going to do much physically not going to do much outside of McMahon and defensively Holmberg has struggled McMahon I trust but Holmberg has struggled Robertson not the guy that we kind of look at and say that's the guy who's going to shut things down so there are some question marks about this lineup um top six mm, whatever you better show up you're the big boys you get paid a lot of money if there's ever an opportunity for you to show up and take over a game it will be here tonight and as for the uh the fourth line i think they'll be fine physically can you turn it around on boston that's yet to be determined i've got some concerns about this third line sliding down to what we've got for defensive pairings tonight same as always i mean not always being the last few games i guess but riley ekman larson First pair, Jake McCabe, Chris Tanev. Second pair, Simone Benoit, Connor Timmins. Third pair. Then power play, slight adjustments with Matthews being out, obviously, but you're going to get Nyes, JT, Marner, Riley, Nylander. So Riley comes back in, change things up from the uh, from the five forward unit. The one thing that I think would be very interesting here would be kind of what Pierre Maguire alluded to on the morning show. Now you've got a true 1A shooter. Um, I think Matthews is more of a 1A shooter than Nylander. Let's be clear about that. But like with not both of them on the line, this all coming down to Nylander here tonight to be like, hey, you're the guy who can score goals and shoot the puck. Is there going to be an elevation in this power play? Can Nylander be a guy to take over? That's something to watch for me. Second unit, Domi, McMahon, Pacioretty, Ekman, Larson, Robertson see what they do there as for the goalie for tonight anthony stolars has been confirmed in nets for this leafs team i mean i think he's been incredible uh so far throughout the course of this season i think he has held them in games that maybe they didn't deserve i think he has gotten them points in games that they probably shouldn't have and maybe even won them some games that maybe they shouldn't have so uh stolars goes here tonight against boston i think he's earned it and i'm glad to see him get another opportunity in net for this leafs team let's get to our best bet of the night for those of you keeping track yes we did lose the last one but we're still up on the season as of right now. We are up 0.5 units. We have a 5-9 and nine record, but it doesn't matter because we're not worried about the record. We are worried about ROI and how much money is in our pocket at the end of the season. And right now, we still got an extra 50 bucks to be holding on to. Let's get to this best bet. And our best bet for game 14 is presented by Bet365. Proud partner of the Leafs Nation Nation pregame and the Leafs Nation after dark. You can open an account with Bet365 today and bet on a huge range of markets. Use code NATION, N-A-T-I-O-N, that's code NATION, 
N-A-T-I-O-N when you sign up. So whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. All right, let's go to the board. Let's check out what we've got on deck for tonight's game. Simple as always, pull up Bet365 screen. We're going to head over. I have two best bets for tonight. We're going to be risking a full unit in total, but we're going to go half on each. One of them, I understand why you guys may not like it. The other one, I think, is just an absolutely incredible bet right now and something we just cannot be passing up on. So let's go to the Bet365 board. We're going to go first and foremost to the goal score section. We'll keep this simple. We'll keep this tight. We're going to go Max Pacioretty plus 400. Look, I've been looking at Max Pacioretty basically anything within plus 300 and higher. Obviously, who they're playing is dependent on whether or not I want to be betting it. But uh, Max Pacioretty plus 400. 50 bucks on this profits you 200 tonight. That's the first one. Second line, he's going to probably get some power play looks here at some points as well. Maybe they want to move Riley off. Maybe they want to move Marner back to the point, Nylander to the point. You want to put in a forward there. Pacioretty's probably the guy who gets an extra look in that. Late game stuff, Matthews is out. Maybe you have to elevate someone else. Nice has already been getting those opportunities. So with Matthews out, who's the next guy up? I still think it's either Pacioretty or Domi. And Domi has been doing some weird stuff that maybe Craig Berube will lack some trust in him with. I think Pacioretty gets up. So with that line, how well that they've been playing, kind of the big game moment where it feels like you're going to have to be physical and throwing your body around, imposing your will. Pacioretty has been doing that. Half unit, 50 bucks on Max Pacioretty right now, uh, plus 400 profits you 200. That's the first best bet. Second best bet of the night, we're going to shots on goal. Uh, we are going to go down to the shots on goal market, but we're not just going to go to shots on goal. We are going to actually navigate over to the shots on goal, not over unders, but milestones for tonight. And we're going to take a look at the milestones. This one is on a Bruins player. Unfortunately, it is what it is, but I think that this is a good bet for us, and it's going to be David Pasternak 5 plus. Plus 145 for David Pasternak 5 plus. That one is going to be added for another half unit on this one. $50, David Pasternak plus 145 to record over four and a half shots on goal. Five plus here tonight. Look, there's a slight edge on this one, just numbers wise across the market. The other thing is we're going to obviously profit $72.5 on this. That's a nice little return. And additionally, this guy's been called out by his coach. Uh, this is an opportunity for him here tonight to just say, screw it. I, I'm all in. I'm a big time performer against this Maple Leafs team. This is a rivalry in Toronto. Bright lights. Everyone's going to be watching. What am I going to do? How am I going to respond? Like this seems like a no brainer night where he goes absolutely postal and has like eight shots on goal. I feel like David Pasternak could absolutely, um, even if he's not scoring and the Leafs win this one, go nuts from an offensive generation standpoint and end up with like seven, eight shots on goal here tonight. Over four and a half, we're five plus at plus 145. That's my second best bet. 50 bucks on that. So 50 bucks, Pacioretty, anytime goal at plus 400 to profit you 200, 50 bucks on David Pasnack over four and a half shots on goal, 50 bucks to profit you 72.50 at plus 145. Those are the best bets for tonight's game. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe here to the channel, the Leafs Nation 401 on YouTube. If you want to listen to the Leafs Nation after dark, after the show here tonight, where I come on the pregame, and I'm joined by Jay Rosehill, by the way, Make sure to find us on the Leafs Nation After Dark, wherever you find your podcast. Thanks so much to everyone who tuned in. Appreciate it, as always. Look forward to seeing you tonight. And don't forget, keep believing. For more content just like this, including game previews, post-game live shows, Leafs Morning Take, Monday through Friday with Nick Alberga and Jay Rose Hill with special guests, as well as instant reaction videos, make sure to be subscribed here to the Leafs Nation YouTube channel. Turn on notifications so you don't miss anything. And... Drop a like.